of the discourse. We've taken an abandoned concrete factory at the margins of the declining American empire and repurposed it into a battleground where 19 separate entities from across the political spectrum enter the discourse one by one and do battle to determine who controls the narrative force of the discourse. I hope you'll join me, your Southern Gothic futurist host, Dirt God Raven Mac, for each and every episode of Monday Night Rumble of the Discord. Hey, what is up, folks? This is your boy, Dirt God Raven Mac. Greetings, greetings, greetings from our cold, chilly, abandoned concrete factory at the edge of town. Had a little bit of snow here locally. Small turnout in the building tonight in the facilities, but we have, as always, 27 competitors are here for our event tonight. Two are at the opening bell. Y'all know how this goes, and if you don't, you can read the screen. You get a point for eliminating folks. The final four get bonus points. We are in week three of a seven-week week series <clears throat> they're accumulating points all these folks the first six weeks and then in that seventh week they're going to be coming out in reverse order trying to be crowned the champion of the discourse for winter 2024 uh we've had two events so far the first one was won by donald trump clarence thomas was a runner-up last week was won by not an fbi agent so our standings are as you see clarence thomas is not an fbi agent at the top donald trump up there the bootlicker president biden independent centrist mike pence and the police state are there as well monday night rumble at a discourse is brought to you by friends of catbird friends of catbird brought this to you they are our sponsors and with that in mind um i did speak to catbird he is here and i talked to catbird he won't talk on camera he doesn't want to talk on the mic um but he did have his piece of wisdom i was asking him about country folks and donald trump and and politics and and all that and catbird told me he he said he mentioned store-bought biscuits those cans of store-bought biscuits And, and catbird said biscuits ain't all that hard to make it's just flour milk buttermilk butter it's not really difficult to make biscuits and it's not even really expensive there's a reason people always make biscuits because you could buy flour in bulk and do it nice and cheap and they taste so much better than those canned biscuits catbird told me how much he hates them canned biscuits because the country store not far from here that he lives near he said that they now serve those type of biscuits instead of homemade biscuits for their breakfast sandwiches and he don't even get them anymore he don't even want it because they taste so disgusting anyways make a long story short what catbird got around to saying was country folks nowadays are not really country folks in the sense of actual biscuits country folks are more like those cans of biscuits they're manufactured country folks they're not real country they just think they're country and he said that's why you see all these damn trucks driving around a brand new seventy thousand dollar truck loan he couldn't imagine having a seventy thousand dollar loan for a car he thought that was ridiculous of course catbird drives an old truck it's kind of a piece of shit but he, he drives it and it's it's his daily beater and it keeps going um so that was catbird's worst of wisdom my venmo and cash app are there you can always kick a tip if you want you can sponsor it but friends of catbirds have sponsored this entire season and with that in mind let's get to discoursing go up to the ring and you can see that our referees tonight are the police state and the lady cop and it's my understanding that even though the police state was on that leaderboard they may be our referees for the remainder of the season except for maybe that final i don't know that's that's that was the rumor i had and coming up first Last week's winner, that not an FBI agent, allegedly an Antifa member, but also very clearly saying he's not an FBI agent. A little bit of trickery. And Reply Guy from the south side of Facebookistan, here comes the Reply Guy. He'll be going up against this not an FBI agent. Set this thing off. We'll see how this goes. Again, not a, not a big crowd here tonight. Might be a little quieter than normal. We only had small turnout because of the snow. Um, but, you know, today is the Iowa caucus and reply by going right after not an FBI agent. And they're fighting back. Um, Iowa caucus today. We'll see how that turns out. I have refrained from watching the news since I've been up here or listening to anything. So I don't know exactly what happened. I know the early things are saying Trump was expect. Looked like he was going to run away with that thing, but uh, we'll see what happens. Not an FBI agent with a face buster on Reply Guy drops him right across that face. Of course, he's rocking that Fu Manchu. Classic Reply Guy style. 
police state climbing one of those ladders we have those seven ladders that represent the meritocracy myth that you can work hard and climb your way to anything in america and we get a buzzer and it's senator ted cruz that dumb bastard from texas ted cruz he's coming on out and he's gonna help us get to discoursing and he's right on that not an fbi agent but there's a reverse and pushed into reply guy looks like the lady cop got bloody in there already and reply guy just drops that not an fbi agent right on his side nice sidewalk slam there Snap mare, reverse snap mare. Ted Cruz grabbing Ted Cruz thrown down by not an FBI agent. And there's a pin and a quick count. Ted Cruz did not get far tonight, folks. Ted Cruz already eliminated. So he's gone. And we get a buzzer, and we've only got our fourth competitor. And Ted Cruz already been eliminated for the next person came out. And it's Senator Kirsten Cinema coming from Arizona that... And there's a pin on the reply guy. Only a one count. And Kirsten Sinema has one of those briefcases full of lobbyist money. And she nails that not an FBI agent. Now reply guy twisting that ankle. Kirsten Sinema wearing those lavender leggings. Reply guy got that briefcase she brought in. Sinema got tangled up with the police state there briefly. That's not going to help her cause. And there's a sidewalk slam on Cinema on the ladder, and she's eliminated, so she didn't make it to the next competitor either. And that is Vivek Ramaswamy. So Ramaswamy's coming out, part of that Republican field. Um, I'd say his 15 minutes of political fame are probably just about over. But he joins the melee here, and there's a roll up on Reply Guy, but not an FBI agent. Only a one count. Ramaswamy, you know, not an FBI agent. And then going after Reply Guy. And Lady Cop with an elbow there, not an FBI agent. And police state running. There's a roll up on Reply Guy. There's a one and just a one. Kick out by Reply Guy. Nice backhand by Ramaswamy. And then he nice takedown on not an FBI agent. Looking pretty good. And we get a buzzer. And coming out is Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon, of course. Pretty key in engineering Trump mania back in the day. Kind of say he created a Frankenstein. Bannon, of course, still a prominent figure in engineering mass right-wing consciousness. He's got a piece of, piece of fencing there, it looks like. Ramaswamy locking up with Bannon, but Bannon nails him. Not an FBI agent still in there. Reply guy. They both started it out. Bannon and Ramaswamy. Your referees again are the police state and the lady cop. And we got a buzzer. And looky here. It's the burn dog. Bernie Sanders. Senator from Vermont. Of course, he, uh, Iowa caucus relevant. 2020, Bernie Sanders actually got the most votes in that Iowa caucus for the Democrats, but... Pete, Pete Bourgeoisie got the most delegates out of it somehow, and Bernie sort of got stiffed, and Biden actually was, I think he was like even fourth in 2020 during that, and somehow ended up getting the election, so if there's a slow count there, as Bernie tried to pin the reply guy, police they climbed that ladder and fell off, Ramaswamy knocks down Bernie, and here comes Chris Christie. So Chris Christie joins things. Chris Christie, of course, was a Republican candidate for president as well. He dropped out recently, hoping to have some of his anti-Trump points or non-Trump points swing over to Nikki Haley to give her a better chance at upsetting Trump. But that thing seems pretty much set in motion, man. Trump is going to win that nomination. The only thing that's going to keep him out of it is jail. But I was reading even if he goes to jail, like Trump could get elected and go to jail at the same time. And there's really nothing to get rid of him from being president except for impeachment, which might not happen even if he goes to jail. Not an FBI agent over that top rope, but he gets back in. But he's over again. And he's fighting, hanging on, and he gets back in. We got a buzzer, and it's Chuck Schumer. Senator Chuck Schumer from New York, of course, helped engineer a budget deal, hoping to avert a shutdown. I think we have one of these government shutdown threats like every three months now. 
It's like basically like a late cutoff notice for your electric bill at this point. So we've got a crowded field and their reply guy though rolls up Schumer. Couldn't quite get him. Chris Christie got an ankle lock on not an FBI agent. Steve Bannon, Bernie Sanders, Vivek Ramaswamy out there as well. <clears throat> and we got a buzzer and it's the Proud Boy. Oh boy, the Proud Boy. So here comes the Proud Boy. One of those idiotic Proud Boys. There's a loud scream out there by Bannon. We got kind of a crowded field in there now. There's ladders, people getting dropped on ladders. There's a bat in there now as well. This is the discourse. Bunch of cluster fuckery. It's chaotic. And there's a pin on reply guy, but a really slow count. Steve Bannon going for the pin on reply guy. Bernie Sanders over the top rope, but he gets back in. And here comes a buzzer, and it's Tim Scott. He was a candidate for Republican presidential candidate. Uh, I guess good to have Tim Scott out here on MLK Day. Probably didn't really share MLK's politics, but he's out here. Man, this is a busy field. I'd like to see some of these folks get eliminated, kind of thin this down. And, and there, actually, there goes one. Looks like Ramaswamy rolls up Chuck Schumer, and Chuck Schumer is out. And our pin, pin attempts are coming rapidly, and Bernie and Tim Scott teamed up on not an FBI agent there. Chris Christie went for the cover. And then Reply Guy pins Vivek Ramaswamy. So Reply Guy gets the pin. And then here comes Clarence Thomas, of course. Not an FBI agent tossed while Clarence Thomas was coming out. So Clarence Thomas, Supreme Court Justice, he's at the top of our leaderboard, but did not win that first week. Got the most points that first week, but did not win. So he is out here. Again, another, another black Republican on MLK Day. And he just tosses the reply guy. So who do we have out here? We got the reply guy still out there. Steve Bannon fighting it out. Bernie Sanders, Chris Christie, the Proud Boy, Tim Scott, and Clarence Thomas. And joining him, Angela Davis. Angela Davis. Okay. I guess it's good we have an actual socialist, black socialist out here on MLK Day. Angela Davis coming out. Always good to see her mentioned in the discourse. And that was a quick roll up on Clarence Thomas by the Proud Boy, but he didn't get a didn't even got a one count. So again, the field filling up. 27 Chris Christie out there on that apron, but he gets one of those beef cases. And he's going after Steve Bannon. No love lost between them. Chris Christie definitely not a Steve Bannon type Republican. And Christie just nailed the lady cop for some reason. Ladders down, people, bodies everywhere. Referees down, we got a buzzer. And it's long COVID, long COVID coming out. Have you been feeling foggy brain, folks? Might have long COVID. I know people aren't dying like like we saw during, and they're over the top rope. Christy and COVID gets back in and their reply guy pins the proud boy. I know people aren't dying like it was during the height of the pandemic, but there's some strange respiratory illnesses going on. Reply guy got pinned in there. I think that was Tim Scott who pinned him. Some respiratory illnesses. Uh, a friend of mine actually had a long bout with respiratory illness. Um, so there's a lot of things going on. COVID is long COVID is something out there, you know, and it's going to be fun. You think the political discourse is bad now. Wait until we have a couple years of people with unexplained foggy brain going on. Speaking of foggy brains, here comes Marjorie Taylor Greene, that insane congresswoman from Georgia. She joins the melee. Chris Christie with an elbow on long COVID. Tim Scott still out there. Steve Bannon. Chris Christie on Steve Bannon now. Marjorie Taylor Greene and Clarence Thomas locked up. And there's a pin on Bernie Sanders by Tim Scott. Only a one count. 
another pin there. Bernie pins Tim Scott. So Bernie reversed it and pinned Tim Scott. And here comes Vice President Kamala Harris. So this is something I realized this past weekend in doing my prep work for the rumble of the discourse is if Trump gets this nomination, which he likely will, he's going to have a vice president and we're going to have Kamala Harris having a debate with whoever is Trump's vice president candidate. And that's going to be, well, that's going to be like most vice president debates. It's going to be horrible. And Kamala Harris just knocked Steve Bannon out. So Steve Bannon is eliminated by the vice president. And then Burn Dog, Bernie Sanders just put a spine breaker on MTG. And here comes the bootlicker. You know it, the bootlicker back out here. He's on that leaderboard at the beginning of the night that I showed you. Clarence Thomas with a one count on Kamala Harris. Bootlicker saluting the cops, saluting the troops, saluting the flag. Bootlicker salutes anything y'all tell him to salute, man. Kamala Harris and Clarence Thomas locked up there for a little while. Bernie Sanders and Angela Davis going at it. It's a mess. And Kamala Harris with a pin attempt over there on that. Clarence Thomas only got a two count. And buzzer coming out now. Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. President's son, Hunter Biden, popped up on Capitol Hill again this week. Challenging Republicans to let him testify in public, said he ain't afraid. Hunter Biden back out there in the discourse trying to do some damage. I'm sure they think Democrats think that's probably going to help for him to be out there challenging Republicans, but a little iffy to put a former crack addict out there in public because uh, I don't know if you've ever worked with crack addicts, they, they tend to let you down in key moments. And long COVID takes out Angela Davis. You hate to see that, folks. Mask up. Long COVID takes out Angela Davis. At the same time, the Blue Sky Communist comes out. And Chris Christie got pinned in there by the, the bootlicker. And Marjorie Taylor Greene was tossed as well. And Blue Sky Communist coming out. Let me get things clean. Get my notes cleaned up here. Well, and there's a pin on long COVID by Commons. So let's see. Bernie Sanders is still out there. Clarence Thomas, long COVID. Vice President Kamala Harris, the bootlicker. Hunter Biden, and now that Blue Sky Communist, he's out there. Formerly the Twitter Communist, now the Blue Sky Communist. And there's a pin on Bernie by Hunter Biden. And Bernie is gone. So Hunter Biden, the vice, the president's son, takes out Bernie. And here comes the wealthy leftist. Former Bernie bro, now a wealthy leftist. Thinks he knows how to solve society. Wealthy, but a leftist somehow. Kamala Harris looking a little battered in the face there. Nails the lady cop. Clarence Thomas on Kamala Harris. Wealthy leftist in long COVID going at it. And there's a pile driver on long COVID. Wealthy leftist oh, couldn't even get a count. And there's a pin on the Blue Sky Communist. And Hunter Biden has eliminated the Blue Sky Communist. So Hunter Biden getting a couple of eliminations here. And here comes Cornell West. Third party candidate for President Cornell West. And Biden in there pinned. And there is a pin on Biden by Clarence Thomas. So Hunter Biden eliminated by Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas having a good showing here tonight. He's the longest man out there. Clarence Thomas, long COVID, Vice President Kamala Harris, the bootlicker, the wealthy leftist, and Cornell West. Thank you. Well, here comes Mike Johnson. We have six more. We'll count Mike Johnson. We have six more. So here comes Mike Johnson, Speaker of the House. negotiated that budget deal like I mentioned earlier kind of made some hardcore Republicans angry who just kind of want everything to break and there's a pin on long COVID Cornell West takes out long COVID so long COVID eliminated by Cornell West 
So we've got six folks in there. We got five folks still coming out. I believe Biden is still left to come out. I believe Donald Trump is still coming out. I think I would expect Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis to be coming out. Yep, and here's Ron DeSantis now. Little Ronnie DeSantis. Little midget. Little punk ass. So goofy ass Ron DeSantis comes out. Kamala Harris going for him right away. And then Mike Johnson locks up with Kamala Harris. The bootlicker nails Cornell West on the back. Long Cove is still lurking, even though it's been eliminated. And there's a pin on the bootlicker. Kamala Harris gets a two count. And there's a pin on the wealthy leftist. Mike Johnson got a two count. And then another one count on DeSantis. Man, this count's going on left and right. The wealthy leftist punching Mike Johnson in the face. And here comes Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, so that, that the, who's seen as the primary challenger to Trump. I haven't seen the results tonight. We'll see what the Iowa caucus has to say about that. Pretty much a long shot, but you never know what happens. I think a lot of the Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis are trying to position themselves to remain in this as long as possible. With the possibility of Trump and the bootlicker tossed by Cornell West. Kicked by Cornell West knocks out the bootlicker. So Haley and DeSantis are just trying to last as long as they can and the off chance Trump goes to jail. And there is a pin on Mike Johnson by Cornell West. Cornell West is clear in house, folks. Doing some damage tonight, Cornell West. And here he comes, man, the face of the Republican Party, the ass of the Republican Party, Donald Trump. So he joined, he's on that top rope, and Nikki Haley's up there, and Trump was in a bad spot. He could have got knocked off. Cornel West has those brass knucks from ringside, and that was a quick count on the wealthy leftist. Clarence Thomas, with the quick count by the referee, pins the wealthy leftist. So we've got six folks in there. we got two more to come out. I know Biden is one of them. I don't know who the other one is. I can't think of who it might be. And there is a pin on Nikki Haley. So Nikki Haley did not last long. Clarence Thomas eliminates Nikki Haley. And we got a buzzer. And it's RFK Jr. Robert Kennedy Jr. Third party candidate for president as well. Not clear who he's going to take votes from. Not clear what his point is conspiracy brain damaged individual RFK Jr. and I guess it's yeah, well there's a pin on Kamala Harris vice president I mean president tr former president Trump pins Kamala Harris uh, but with RFK Jr. I guess I can understand well and just like that he's out I was going to say I can see why you'd be conspiracy damaged if your father was your father's death was a conspiracy that probably was true but he's gone and we get a buzzer and here he comes, folks, President Biden. So we've got five folks left, and President Biden comes out. Got the short run to the final four, so President Biden looking good for those bonus points. So we've got President Biden, former President Trump, presidential candidate Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, third-party presidential candidate Cornell West, and Clarence Thomas, the Supreme Court Justice. So these five men are duking it out, looking to get those bonus points for being the final four. Biden on that top rope, that's a bad place to be, but he nails Clarence Thomas. And Cornell West slams Ron DeSantis, but police state over there doing a count on the other side. Gets a one count on top DeSantis, but then he gets, police state gets knocked over and Lady Cop had to do the count. Trump and Cornel West team up to drop DeSantis. West goes for the pin again. And that's three. Cornel West eliminates Ron DeSantis. So that's it for DeSantis. We've got our final four. And I think this was the final four in week one. So we have a repeat of our final four from week one with Clarence Thomas, Cornel West, Donald Trump, and President Biden. And Trump got Cornel West rolled up in a crippler crossface. And that's it for Cornell West. He gives it up, taps out to Donald Trump. So it is Trump, Biden, and Clarence Thomas. And that makes sense because you got to figure the Supreme Court is going to become involved in this election either beforehand or afterwards or somehow. This thing is going to go to court, man. The constitutionality of things are being tested. 
<laughs> and there's a pin on Trump by Biden, and Biden eliminates Trump, so it may not be the general election, but Trump got taken out tonight, baby. President Biden put it to him. And now Biden's got Thomas in that headlock, and Thomas punching Biden, Biden punching Thomas, man, they are just pummeling each other. This is what it's going to come down to. This is going to decide things. Biden trying to just wrenching on that head. Thomas getting punches. He lets him up. They get up. Thomas has those brass knucks. Watch out, President Biden. Biden hits him with the drop kick into the ladder. Elbow drop by Biden. Another big elbow drop. And he's got his legs. He picks him up. He's got those brass knucks now, and here he comes. Big suplex. Oh, man. Biden drops him down. Goes for the pin. And that is three. One, two, three, folks. President Biden wearing the brass knucks on his fist. Biden came for business tonight. Thomas stumbles out of the ring. Can hardly keep himself upright. Biden with the win. Let's look at that replay, folks. So Biden has... Gets Thomas up and then drops him right into a suplex pinning attempt. What a finish there tonight's results. Let's look at this. <coughs> Excuse me. President Biden gets those 10 bonus points, two eliminations, but those two eliminations were Donald Trump and Clarence Thomas, the two other men in the final three. Biden has 12 points, Clarence Thomas with 10 points, Donald Trump and Cornell West with seven apiece. The reply guy picked up three. Hunter Biden and Long COVID both picked up two points, eliminating two folks each, and then we had eight folks with one point. So our standings after three of seven events. Clarence Thomas at the top of the board with 24 points. Can you believe that, folks? President Biden, Donald Trump right there, not an FBI agent. And the bootlicker and Cornell West with 10. The independent centrist still showing up on the leaderboard. We didn't see him tonight, but that independent centrist is still on that leaderboard. So that's where we are. And folks, as always, this is sponsored by my Southern Gothic Futurist Patreon. If you made it this far into this thing, you should be supporting my Southern Gothic Futurist Patreon. Uh, basically what that is is just access to all the crazy shit shit that I do. Uh, this is part of it. It supports this. Uh, it supports a lot of other things I do. But um, Southern Gothic Futures Patreon link should be in the bio. I don't know if YouTube even lets the link be live. I'll put it in the comments. If not, I don't know what the hell's going on. And everybody's trying to monetize everything. And I'm trying to monetize my life by having you support that Patreon. We're all trying to survive capitalism, but we're all pretty much doomed, to be honest. Eh, you know what, though? Apocalypse is always on the horizon. You still gotta live, man. Enjoy your life. Live it up, baby. Breathe deep. Have a good day. I hope it's a good week for you, regardless of how the discourse pounds on you. And until next week, oh god, I gotta do this again next week, Bob. Yeah, okay. Until next week, salam.